Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today we're going to be taking our musical act on the road, trying to hit as many states as possible in On Tour. This is one of those ever popular roll and write games. You're going to roll some dice and then you're going to use what came up in order to mark up your own map of the United States, featuring all the states in the continental US, trying to connect them in a specific order in order to visit all of those states with your band, as I said. That's the objective. Visit as many of the states as possible, try to get the highest score possible. Let's go ahead and dive into it. I'm going to show you how the game works. It's a very simple concept. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. In the game, each player is going to have one of these boards, and they are going to, after setup, have four numbers written in here. Uh, you would roll the uh, two dice for that and uh, flip over some cards and set up the board. Everyone's board is going to be identical. So this player's board would have the same location circled with the same numbers written in there. You can also, just for fun, write the name of your band right here. And then what you are attempting to do throughout the game is connect locations as your band goes on tour in order to get the highest score possible. You are going to be adding up your score right here and basically for every state you visit and every one of those that has a circle around the number, you're going to add those two things together and that's going to be your total score. How do you do that? Well, you're going to be tracing a path through different states and you can continue to do so as long as the numbers continue to go up or they are the same. So I could do 2 here at the beginning, 3, 5, 11, 11, 14, and so on, making my way around, trying to connect as many as I can. Here's how a round goes. We're going to take three of these cards and we're going to flip them over and make them available. So I'm going to scoot the deck out here just to make this a little more clear. Those are our three cards. The three cards are going to show you a region. So for example, the south half of the country, the west of the country, and so forth. And also within that uh, region, they're going to highlight a specific state. Like this one has the west and California specifically highlighted. Then we're going to take the two dice and we're going to roll them. And they'll give you a two-digit number. Actually, two numbers. 47 and 74. And then everyone simultaneously is going to use both of those numbers, 47, 74, and write them in somewhere on their board. So you can do this by picking a card. Let's say 47 is the one I want to place first. Everyone's doing this simultaneously. If I choose this card for my 47, I can put it anywhere in the West. I would just write 47 in there and be done with that one, then I'll work on the 74. If I specifically put it in California though, I'm going to circle that state, and then later on if I traverse it, it'll be not just one point for having visited the state, but another point for it being circled. So 47, and obviously right away the planning is going to start. I'm thinking I might do my trip might follow me this way, try to pick up that 20 on the way, make it out here to this 37, work this part of the country, and end up up here somewhere. That's the plan anyway. It's likely not going to flow that way. So 47 then, if I'm picking up on the 37 and continuing this way, I want it over here somewhere. You know, California might be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my 47 there, and I'm going to circle that because I picked that very specific state. That one's used for me. For the 74, I cannot pick that card, that region. And so now I might do, okay, my 74, I want it to end up up here somewhere. Well, that central region looks good. Uh, I could put it right in that state. I gotta get from the 73 to the 74. That means I need to go through here and that's not a big window. I need to repeat one of those two numbers. So I'm not gonna take that risk. I'm just gonna put the 74 here and not circle it. There you go. And once everyone's done that, then we remove these three cards. We flip over three new cards and we roll the dice again. And that's going to give us, in this case, 30 and 3. And we could do that. Okay, great. I got a 2 right there. I do have a card here that gives me the central region. Hmm, I'm going that way. So I'm going to put my 3 right here. I'm not circling it because that state is not highlighted. My 30, well, uh, 
I cannot use the central region again. That's taken by my 3. So where am I going to put my 30? Nothing else is good if I'm to hold to my plan, in which I do this and kind of loop back around. So maybe I'll just throw my 30 into a wasted corner somewhere. I'm going to put it way up here. I don't think I'll be visiting that spot anyway. So I'm throwing my 30 out there out of the way using this card that lets me write anywhere in the north. That's it. That's how the game works. Now, every now and then you're going to get a chance to put in a star, which is a wild spot on the board. And the way that happens is either you roll doubles on the dice, so say 33, and instead of writing a 33, I'm just going to put a star somewhere on the board, or the three cards that got flipped all feature the same region. You know, uh, south, 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 for example. Uh, and then you would do that. I can't find them right now. Oh, there we go. So, you know, if this was my card flip for the round, then I can just put a star anywhere I want to. And that star is wild. It's anything. If, as I go through it, it will work for me. Uh, and that's basically the game. Once you're done, which is every state has a number, once you're down to one or two, you no longer need to flip cards then you will do the best you can to connect all these up, making sure you follow that numerical sequence, and then write down your score right here. There's gonna be a lot of planning in game, so you can use these connections between states to help you along the way with always having the freedom of saying, well, that didn't pan out, let me just undo that. And instead, I'm gonna go this way and then back down there and pick that up, you know, because I put something there that was convenient for me, whatever. So there you go, that's the game. Very straightforward, but real thinky as well in many ways, and uh, tricky to get what you want where you want it. There you go, that is On Tour. Let's go back up top, let me tell you what I think of it. That is On Tour, so let's talk about this. I like roll and rights. I think a lot of them are lacking, especially these days, there's so many, are lacking a, a special spark, a little something that pushes it outside of that this is another roll and write game, but I think this game on tour has that. I'm not sure why. I think perhaps the theme, perhaps the the beautiful production of the game. It is a large box, but a lot of love and care went into this, and I think maybe that's it. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about it, and I'll tell you what I think of it. The only thing that I give a minor negative to here is game length. The box says 20 minutes. I don't think I've ever played this in 20 minutes. More like 40 minutes. It's okay, it does not necessarily outstay its welcome too much. You're going to be thinking for those 40 minutes. There are things to consider, and it's a puzzly kind of game. But it is not that short, you know. Um, so there you go. Everything else I really do like. The theme's beautiful. I love the cool idea of you having a musical act and going on the road, trying to logistically hit up all of these different states on your tour. That's cool. And it, again, pushes the game beyond chuck some dice and ride a number on something you know you you want that hook i think the musical thing could very well be the hook in this one the aesthetics great production values here box is lovely i love the illustrations there's not too many of them honestly the box i think has more artwork on it than just about the rest of the game combined really but it is lovely it's very well done yes the box is very big for a roll and write if you have just the core box i there are four boards in there you could have multiples and then you can play up to 12 people and keep all the components for that in a single box that's the idea i think that's why the box is so big um as it is i like it i'm happy with the production myself replayability it's high because of that luck because of the card flop and the dice rolling and all of those things combined the puzzle stays fresh because the lock the the luck of the roll is high it affects everyone the same way right it's a single roll for everybody so I, that's okay i like that and everyone does start with the exact same setup and quickly you know quickly deviates from what everybody else is doing but it does keep that replayability high and this game is certainly puzzly because of the nature of the rolling writing numbers and then figuring out how do I connect this whole chain. Really a fun exercise. Uh, ease of play. It's a clean flow. It's a clever game. I like the idea of every now and then ideally getting one of those stars. It always seems like you get them right when you need them. I love that. 
uh, you know, rolling the doubles or, or flipping over three cards that have the same region. It can definitely get you out of a tight jam, you know. And that's the final thing, the strategy and tactics. The game, what makes the game play fun is, on the one hand, yes, the puzzles. The, the getting it all to do what you want it to do. But on the other hand, it's this idea of playing chicken with the dice, with the system. You know, this idea of, as you saw me in the overview, it's doing that whole, like, I'm going to put a 37 here and a 39 here. <clears throat> There's one connection between them. That means I better get a 37, because 37, 37, 39, that's fine. Or 39, or 38. That's it. Or star, right? But that star, by the time it comes up, you're likely wanting that star in like three places. And figuring out where you start, where you end your tour, what can you bypass, how do you do it, did you squeeze yourself into a corner because there are now no through states that are clear, all of those things really do make it a fun game. I like it a lot. So, this one's going to get a seal of approval from me. I recommend it. Check this one out if you're looking for a, a roll and write game with a little more pizzazz, uh, a flashy look, and a fun theme that everyone can enjoy. There you go. That's it for me on tour. Seal of approval once again. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.